Now let's work on the small blades for the front of our weapon. So I want to create some more blades kind of up here. So I'm going to again start with just a box primitive. And I go ahead and just drag this out. And we'll make it something like that. Give it a little bit of height. You can see that over there. And I want to just match this up with the other blade as far as the thickness. So go ahead and move that down a little bit. And let's take the height up slightly. So we end up with something like that. Okay, we can change change up the width if we want. I'm going to go ahead and go into the top uh, top view and just start shaping this. And again, I want to do the same uh, sort of thing I did with the blade here, except on the inside, I'm going to leave that uh, so that there's no blade there. So I'm going to come back in and stop there. So uh, this is going to be the point, and then we'll have blade here and here, and then we'll make one that's kind of coming back in. So uh, let's go ahead and work on that. So convert that to an editable poly. Go to our uh, vertex mode, and for this I'm going to start by moving out the tip of the blade here. So again, I want to create kind of a mirroring curve here. And so I'll bring these points out, and same thing out here. Okay, and this tip, I'm going to actually bring this back just a little bit. So you end up with something like that on the outer edge. And like I said, you can add some resolution in there and get some really nice shapes with your blade if you want to do that. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and shape this as well. I want to make this blade kind of come back here. Let's move this back slightly. So I'll move all of these back, leave, leave them fairly straight, and then start to move those in a little bit more. All right. So as we do this, you can see we're trying to make sure that our geometry is kind of well spaced. As we go into mud box and we start to subdivide these, your spacing is not really going to change. It's going to be proportional to the spacing that you already have, even if you subdivide uh, your geometry. So if you have long thin polygons and you subdivide those, even though they get smaller, they're still going to be long and thin compared to the other polygons. So when you start to go in and add detail, you may find that you're not able to get the kind of smoothness on the features that you're sculpting that you'd like. And some of that is because maybe your uh, geometry is not divided equally over the entire mesh. So some uh, places on the mesh you may be able to get a very fine level of detail. Some places you may not until you go up to an even higher level, which may be overkill for some of those other places. So you just want to create some evenly, sort of evenly spaced uh, geometry here. Okay, so we'll now go ahead and bring out the blade portion of this. So I think we have a division in there. We do. If you don't, you can always go ahead and add one with your swift loop or connect whatever tool that you'd like to use. I'm going to go ahead and bring that out. Bring the edge of the blade, or the end of the blade out there. And we'll do the same thing back here on the end. I'm going to bring that out. And I want this to kind of blend in to this back, so I'm going to leave that alone. These, I'm going to start to bring this out just a little bit. So I want this blade to end at this corner. And I'll go ahead and bring that out as well. Okay, so we get something like that. I'm going to bring that in. Okay, and if I want this to curve a little bit more, I probably need a little bit more resolution in there to be able to do that. So I'll go ahead and bring that back, bring this back, and then go ahead and get our swift loop and add a new line right in there. And that'll give me the opportunity to make kind of a nice curve up here. All right, I'll just kind of move that out. Okay, so again, we want to create the kind of the taper uh, for this. 
So I'll go ahead and just grab those vertices. Okay. And I'll just scale those down in the Z so it's a little bit thinner. And then I can come in again, grab that loop, select the loop, and thin that out a little bit. Okay. I also want to add a little bit of a bend to this. So I could just come in and add a bend deformer. You can see it's not really bending the way I want. That's more like it. So bend it in the Y just a little bit. Okay. And I can just kind of rotate it slightly. Give it a little bit more shape. Okay. Go ahead and collapse that into an editable poly. And now I want to create the base for this. So I'm going to go ahead and choose these polygons right here, the base. And let's just extrude those out. Extrude them by group. Add a little bit more length. Say OK to that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull those into this base. Okay. And so that penetrates in. I'll go ahead and thin that up just a little bit so that it can go into this base. And for that Make this a bit thicker and move it down a little. Just to give it a little bit more of a, a connected look there. Now this is pretty large. I think we actually want to scale this down a bit. So let's make it something more like that. Rotate it a little bit more. So maybe something more like that. All depends on what you want to do. Okay. And so then again, at this point, you want to come in, do the same procedure that you want to do with these as far as laying out the, uh, the UVs. Go ahead and lay those UVs out, add those edges. And then once you do that, once you've got that all done, you want to copy that over the other side. So I'm going to turn on uh, Use Working Pivot, and then I'll just go up to Mirror. Okay, and I'm going to choose to make a copy in the X with no offset. Let's say OK to that. And you can make your copy... Uh, there. So then you end up with something like that. Alright, so we'll go ahead and finish up the UVs and the adding edges. If we take a look at these, you can see the layout that I've got for those. Um, I've actually cut that apart. The same thing we did up here with uh, using the break command. Just select those edges on the interior of that bar, and that way you can just get a maximize your texture space a little bit more. Uh, than what we had if we were just to use the uh, just a planar map. So anyway, you can go ahead and map these the same way. I would just do a planar map on both sides and then add the edges. And then following all of that, then you want to go ahead and mirror that over. Okay, so we'll finish that up. And then in the next lesson, we'll come in and start to work on the handle of our bladed weapon. So we'll go ahead and do that next.